The 5 Principles to Unify Mind and Body Why is it important to unify mind and body? It is easy to understand and difficult to do. We can compare the state of unification with the normal condition of a human being, and it is easy to realize this because we have all experienced it in one way or another in our lives, perhaps even not fully aware of it. But it is difficult to do it because the mind is always agitated, fragmented into a multitude of different thoughts, constantly reacting to external and internal stimuli. This in itself generates a duality between the subject and the object, between the body and the mind, and inevitably a reality made of separate parts is perceived, the subject on the one hand and the things or objects that he observes on the other. In addition, all that disorderly and chaotic movement generates disharmony, lack of rhythm, energy dissipates and loses its strength. Everything leads to disorder and loss of your true identity. To begin to unify the body and the mind, we must stop thinking of them as if they were different. It is a scientific fact and a spiritual truth that matter is energy and energy is the manifestation of the movement of consciousness, therefore matter and energy are manifestations or expressions of consciousness, of the spirit that gives life and permeates all of life creation. Mind moves energy and energy condenses into matter. Matter serves as a vehicle and expression for the spirit. The physical world is a projection of the spiritual world. The true substance of the universe is spirit. The first principle is, calm the mind. The brain is always in activity, emitting and receiving electromagnetic waves. When this activity becomes conscious, that is, when we are aware of it, we call it mental activity or simply thought. Thought is a vibration that affects the physical world. The waves, like the waves of the sea, can be agitated or calm, they can undulate harmoniously or be disturbed disorderly, as in a storm. Mental activity is like the wind on the surface of the water, if there is no wind, the sea is calm, if it blows, the waves rise. The mind in its national state is calm. Sensory activity sends information that provokes a response from the brain and consequently generates conscious activity and more agitation. Modern life, full of stimuli of all kinds, keeps this mental activity agitated and disordered. How to calm the mind if doing makes it even more agitated? Trying not to think is still thinking. Wanting to calm the mind is an activity in itself. It generates waves that will disturb. Let us consider thought as an electric current, a reactive flow of energy and information that seeks to connect, that is, to balance. This movement, which is imbalance, is generated by a potential difference between the brain and the objects of perception. What initiates the movement of consciousness is desire. Desires are like the wind that moves the surface of the calm sea, shaking it. Too many desires disturb mental calm. At the same time we cannot stop desiring because life itself is an expression of desire. It is about controlling them and observing our selfish desires. For this reason to calm the mind you do not have to do anything, well understood. It does not depend on an effort of the will or some kind of thought. It is rather about directing the scattered mind and concentrating it on one point, letting it calm down on its own. When the stimuli cease, the activity decreases. For this, attention and concentration are essential. The first acts as a stimulus filter allowing the mind to concentrate or focus on one point, without effort or tension. 
These cognitive skills are developed with repetition through meditation, study, and practice. Mental control is a superior activity of the mind that is drained, therefore, it is possible to find calm even in the midst of movement and this is the true calm. Aikido is calm in movement. Mental calm and attention are linked to breathing, koku, and posture balance. The second principle is, learn to direct the mind. The concentration in a single point is fundamental, this is called nan. It is the thought moment, here and now. The realization of nan is the key to unlocking the essence of Aikido, in fact, it constitutes the heart of Aikido. In training, the first task is to continually discipline the spirit, sharpen the power of nan, and unify the body and mind. This is the basis for the development of Waza, which in turn develops endlessly through Nin. The great master and founder of Aikido Ashiva Morihai has said, Nin is never concerned with winning or losing, and grows by correctly connecting to the key of the universe. When that happens, Nin becomes a supranational power that clearly sees all things in the world even the smallest movement of a hand or foot. One becomes a clear mirror that reflects all things, and since one is in the center of the universe, one can clearly see everything that is off-center. This is the truth of winning without fighting. Nin, the concentration of the heart on the search for oneness with the universe and the principle of change, becomes the source of the subtle work of Ki. When this subtle work, rooted in Nin, manifests in the heart and mind, the practitioner becomes free and open, and the vision of him is penetrating. When it works through the body, the result is spirited, dynamic movements in circular and spherical rotation. In short, Nin is the line that connects the key of the mind-body with the universal key. The third principle is, relax. This is essential. In a tense body, energy does not flow freely. Tensions generate blockages that cause imbalances. Relaxing is a natural condition of living beings. Animals do it all the time, they can go from action to relaxation quickly. To stimulate relaxation you have to activate the deep nervous system and deactivate the defense and action system. Meditation is the key, but there are also techniques such as massage, particularly shiatsu, breathing and visualization exercises, and disciplines such as yoga and qigong. During training it is necessary to avoid the use of muscular force, twitching and blocking breathing. Relaxing does not mean giving up or a state of laxity. It's all about the right and balanced muscle tension. Aikido training strengthens the soft and relaxes the tense. Fourth principle, bring the energy down. The best place to unify the mind and body is the center of the body, that is, the point below the navel. In Japanese it is called Kikai Dandam, Dandan or simply Hera. Many people today have their energy stored in the upper parts of the body, particularly in the head and chest. This is due to excess thoughts and emotions. It has already been explained that the mind and the emotions move and conduct the energy, which in turn moves the blood and inevitably impacts the physical plane.
therefore, learning to lower the energy and concentrate below the navel is very important. This point is the center of the circle from which all Aikido techniques emerge. From this point the key expands in all directions. It is also important to learn to bring the weight down. This provides stability and strength to the body, promoting psychophysical balance. A stable posture generates a stable mental attitude. If we consciously connect with the earth and let our energy descend, we not only absorb its energy, we also develop roots, and just like a tree, we become firm, stable and flexible. Today, many people lack roots and true national connections and are therefore driven from one place to another without their own will, like cattle. A person without roots is similar to a ghost. A firm and balanced space is the work of Tai Sabaki. Fifth Principle, Expand Key Vital Energy, Key is the power that animates life and keeps all creation moving. It is the force underlying the rhythm of nature and its transformations. In the human body it is represented by breathing. The lungs govern key. This energy is the movement of consciousness, it is vibration. It is a wave that flows, like a spiral and marks the rhythm and time of changes. We can attract it, cultivate it, develop it and treasure it, and from there, expand it and project it, what is impossible is trying to define it. Like life, you have to live it. We must learn to perceive this energy, to feel it in our body and by extension in everything that surrounds us. In Aikido it is Kino Musabi, the connection with energy. If the key is weak, the energy field retracts, the body becomes weak and easily separates from the mind. In these conditions one becomes an attractor of negative vibrations and illness and is easily managed by the environment. It's the key minus. If the key is strong, it expands naturally, the internal organs are filled with vitality mind and body are more easily unified and we can project energy and thoughts coherently and effectively, like a laser. It's the key plus. Once again, breathing is essential. Kokoroku. Without this power, it is not possible to extend the energy. These five principles are explained separately, but they work as one. One spirit, mind and body in unity. Absorbing the key of the universe, expanding the mind to infinity. A key is creating universal order within our own bodies. The physical body, which is a crystallization of cosmic matter and essence, is trained on the path of human life to become one with the universe and to accumulate its miraculous energy, the subtle spirit. In this quest, one must first transcend the ordinary spirit, then polish and purify the vitality of one's nun, feelings and thoughts, and single-mindedly pursue the unification of mind and body.
This is the spirit of Aikido.